Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. We are glad that you are with us. We wish to welcome you to the Daily Bible Study for the Sea Line Church of Christ. If you have been to our building, you know where we are. If, on the other hand, if you are joining us from someplace else in the world or someplace else in the Philippines, we are located in the city of Silang, Cavite, uh, on Algonaldo Highway, or the bypass, at kilometer 42. That makes us about 30 miles or 50 kilometers south of downtown Manila. We are glad that you are with us today, and we hope that our study of God's Word is of benefit to you. As always, we'll start with prayer requests, so if you have some, please enter them at this time. Okay, join us in prayer, please. Uh, dear Lord, we come before you at this time. As always, Lord, with an attitude of gratitude. Grateful, Lord, for the things we continue to receive on a daily basis. However, Lord, we do have some specific petitions that we would like to present at this time. Uh, we continue to pray for Vanessa's mother, and we ask, Lord, that you would grant her full physical restoration. We continue to pray for the sister of Rochelle. We ask, Lord, that she would be granted a safe trip home, that, Lord, she would be able to return to us in a soon, and that things will be okay. Lord, we continue to pray for the spiritual maturity of uh, Chris and Francis, and we ask, Lord, that these young people continue to grow in your will, that they continue to be the people you would have them to be. We ask, Lord, that you grant healing to those who need it, grant peace to those who need it, which is all of us, grant wisdom to those who need it, which is all of us. We ask, Lord, that you simply help us to each continue to be your salt and light to the world. Through Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to continue our study. Um, one of the things we've noticed... Rochelle, would you uh, give us Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, please? Yeah. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Because uh, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And verse 10. For with, okay. Go ahead. You're fine. Read okay. verse 10. Verse 10. For with the heart, one believes and is sanctified. Sanctified. Ah, sanctified. Keep going. Hello, did you get it all? Rochelle? Or with the heart one believes and is justified. And with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Okay, there you go. So now this confession, uh, I want to be clear about a couple of things because people will sometimes take Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, and they will misunderstand what it says. This is not a confessing of our sins. This is not asking for somebody to forgive our sins because the only person who can forgive our sins is who? Jesus the Christ. Jesus. What this is, is this is a public confession of the fact that we have a Savior in Jesus Christ 
And we understand that he is the one who forgives us our sins. Uh, now, one of the things we want to use as a parallel to show this is Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12 and verse 8. Burley, Luke chapter 12, verse 8, please. Chapter Luke chapter 12, verse 8. Pearly, Luke chapter 12, verse 8, please. Okay. And I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me, the poor man, the son of man also will acknowledge before the angels of God. Okay, so what do we see here? Luke chapter 12, verse 8 is we see that we have to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Christ, and we have to acknowledge this before men. Uh, we also may want to take a look at Philippians, not Philippines, but Philippians, chapter 2, verse 11. Arlene? Say what chapter? Luke. I'm sorry, Luke. Philippians. Philippians. The book is Philippians, chapter 2, <laughs> verse 11. Angie, please turn on your camera. Can you help her with the page? Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 18. Page 1824. Chapter 2, verse 11. And every talk acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. Okay, so what do we see? We see that this confession is not a confessing of our sins to the public. It's not a confessing of our sins to another man. It is confessing that Jesus Christ is the Christ, that he is the Lord. Uh, we can also take a look at prayer. Now, one of the popular misnomers in popular theology today is that we should pray for forgiveness. Dear God, I'm a sinner. Take me as your personal, you know, all of that stuff. However, what we see is that prayer for forgiveness of sins is not something that belongs to the unbeliever. Let's take a look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. First John chapter one, verse nine. And uh, that's you, Lani. First John chapter one, verse nine. 
if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will be and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all the unrighteousness if we what if we confess our sins right yes um but who do we who are we confessing to are we confessing to me to another man to a woman no we're only confessing to god uh let's take a look at psalm 32 psalm 32 and verse 5 Hey, Cora? hey, hey uh, go ahead, Fred. Ernest, yeah, so now when you say we confess our sins only to God, but we, you know, we have also the reference where it says calls us to confess our sins to one another. It does. That comes in the book of uh, James, if I'm not James. mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. James chapter two, if I'm not mistaken. We do confess our so, sins, but I'm going to say that when we, the confession there, to, we confess our sins to one another. Uh, I will contend that that confession is that we confess the sins. If I have told, if I've told a gossip on Lailani, if I have stolen from Fred, then I confess my sins to God, but I also need to confess to the person whom I've harmed. Uh, there is no con requirement for, let's suppose that uh, we commit a sin that is private between us and God. There's no mm -hmm. need for a public confession, and there's no need to confess to other people. We should confess if we have harmed someone else. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you understand? It's a uh, confession there. Is Fred? I'm really sorry. I borrowed that hundred dollars and I can't give it back to you. And I do confess that sin to you. I don't need to confess that particular sin to Giselle. I need to confess it to you. Wait, Lana, you got that Psalm verse for me, please. Yes, sir. Psalm, Psalm thirty-two and five. Verse five. Psalm 32, verse 5. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my in iniquity. I said, I will confess my trans transgressions to the Lord, and you forgive the guilt of my sin. And you forgive the guilt of my sins. Did I make an additional point? Go ahead, Fred. So along those lines, I, I I would contend that the principle of confessing to one another, yet it not being a requirement, so I'm not saying a requirement, but a general practice, like especially if you have a mentorship or a relationship, the level of accountability. Um, sometimes as humans, we do things that we're held accountable. And if I know that I can that I'll be confessing my sin, not like I said, as, as a requirement, but more as a maybe general principle, good practice, that that could be also helpful in, you know, I know I'm going to be held accountable to something. I'm likely to get it done. So so I would say, you know, it, it could be a practice that could apply in general. Well, I'm going to say, you see, now we're now we're talking about a little bit different relationship than one that is strictly public. Uh, what we're talking about in this particular case, if I'm hearing you properly, is the relationship of a mentor mentee. And by the way, we each need to have mentors, and we do need to have people that are in our inner circle. Understand, there are two left ditch right ditch situations that deal with confessions that deal with uh, the public acknowledgement of our sin one is the churches that do testimony uh the testimonies it's almost for lack of a better explanation it's all the stories almost become bragging as to how bad of a person i used to be before christ came into my life and that is improper and the other ditch that we can end up into is this 
I am without sin. First John chapter one, verse nine tells us, if you say you are without sin, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. Well, neither of these left ditch or right ditch would then be appropriate. Do we need to have a mentor mentee relationship with someone? I would say yes. Do we need to have somebody who we can, for lack of a better nomenclature, uh, put down the screen and confess, you know, talk to about the things that we struggle with? I would hope so. We each should have that person because, as you said, Fred, that accountability is very important. That somebody who's going to help us walk through. It's not a matter of, I'm okay, you're okay, and I'm not going to tell you what's going on in my life because... We each struggle with a different problem. Are you following what correct. I'm saying, Fred? Correct. Yeah, absolutely correct. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the balanced view. Yeah. You yeah. know that that we have to have that mentor mentee relationship with someone, and everybody doesn't need to know who it is. It just needs to be somebody. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 12, Chris. chapter 3 verse 12 sir yes please for the eyes of the lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers the face of the lord is against those who do evil okay uh there's another verse i want to tie in here because when we put on the television they're going to talk about sinner's prayer and pray in the prayer and be forgiven let's take a look at john chapter 9 verse 31 please john 9 31 vanessa john chapter 9 verse 39 says no, 31 31 okay 31 says we know that god does not listen to sinners but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Okay. Uh, Sinessa, Proverbs chapter 15, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. Okay. Proverbs fifteen twenty nine. Proverbs fifteen verse twenty nine. Yes. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. The Lord is far from whom? Wicked. The wicked. But the he hears the prayer of, of the righteous. But he hears the prayer of the righteous. Fred, that verse you were talking about is James chapter 5 and verse 16. Let's take a look at that. James chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Okay. 
Now, when we make our confession, our public confession, this is not confessing sins, James chapter 5, verse 16. This rather is a confessing of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 8, verse 37, Francis. Acts 8, 37. So, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Fred. Um, now, what you just now said, you're, you're referring to where we're going, not what we just read, right? Correct. You said it's not a, okay. Um, so Acts chapter 8, verse 37 says, Yes, please. Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. He answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Okay, so when we, what happened here? Uh, the Ethiopian eunuch is telling Philip what? That he believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, right? First John yeah. chapter four, verse fifteen, Maricel. First John four fifteen. Chapter four, verse fifteen. Yes. Whoever confesses, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. Okay, so we're in First John. Let's take a look at First John five five, Rochelle. First John chapter five verse five. Who is that overcomes the world except the one? Who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Okay. And now we will complete our circle to come back to where we started all of this. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. Banji? Romans chapter 10, verse 9, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So we have to make a public confession that Jesus is God, and we have to believe that. Uh, we want to be careful of living our lives before men, but at the same time, we want to live a life before men that is worthy of praise that does not bring shame on Jesus Christ. Give me Matthew chapter 10, verse 32, Giselle. Matthew 10, 32. Matthew chapter Chapter 10, verse 32. So everyone who acknowledge me before men, I will also acknowledge before men. Okay, so what does that tell us? In that, heaven. Say it again. For men. I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. Right. Now, when we get to heaven, do we want Jesus Christ to acknowledge us? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Furley, give me Revelations 3, 5, please. Revelations chapter 3, verse 5. Revelations chapter 3 verse 5 verse 5 and in white garments yes five. yes sir chapter 3 verse 5 the one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments and I will never blot his name out of the book of life 
I will confess him his name before my father and before his angels. So what do we see here? If we confess the name of Jesus Christ, ties into that Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. If we confess the name of Jesus the Christ, then he will also confess our name. Where? In heaven, before God the Father and before the angels. Luke chapter 9, verse 23, Arlene. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Sir, what book and chapter, sir? Luke chapter 9, mm -hmm. verse 23. Lailani, since you have the same text she does, would you tell her what page it is? Page 1611, sir. Okay, thank you. Chapter 9, verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Take up your what? Cross. Take up his cross. Take up your cross, right? So we have to bear the burdens that exist in this life. Um, so how are we doing on time? We're okay. Uh, let's deal with some realities related to baptism. Baptism is a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, it is by immersion. We talked about this the other day. There are three Greek words. One is baptizo, means immerse. One is chino, means to pour. And one is parapolizo, which means to sprinkle. Baptizo is the word that we transliterated from Greek into English, and it became baptism. baptism. Baptism is by necessity a burial in water. We looked at this the other day. Lailani, would you take a look, please, at Acts chapter 8, verse 38? Acts chapter 8, verse 38. Acts chapter 8, verse 38. And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. Okay. Would it be necessary to go into the water if you were going to sprinkle or pour? No. No. The only reason you have to go into the water is for the act of baptism which is immersion. And we can also take a look at Romans chapter 6 and verse 4, Cora. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Yes. Got it, princess. Romans chapter 6, verse 4, it says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live in a new life. Okay, so what do we see? Baptism is a burial, right? Burial. We are all going to one time, sooner or later, if Jesus don't mm -hmm. come back, we're all going to die, right? Yes. 
and hopefully after we die, they what they bury us. Buried. Yes. Well, how much dirt do you want them to bury you under? A handful? All of it. A pitcher. All of it. Okay. It's gonna be a, it's you're buried, right? Yep. All the way buried. Um uh, one of the things that we're gonna notice as we study scripture is that salvation always comes at the time of baptism. Mark chapter 16, verse 16, Chris. Mark 16, 16. 16, 16, sir. Yes, please. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Okay, now we're going to look at this again, but I want to point out something while we are here. This is not baptism of infants. Why not? Because they, they have no sin yet. That's true. They but have no sin. It's innocent. Say it again. Infant is innocent. Infants are innocent. That is correct. However, here's but a question. You need to Fred, I think you hit a requirement. it. It's requirement. a requirement that you what, Fred? Believe. 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 Uh, what does a baby, baby believe? Baby doesn't believe. Nothing. He, he believes sir? that he wants mama's milk. <laughs> <laughs> baby a clean diaper. Yes, that's what a baby believes. Uh, we can also take a look at Acts chapter 22 and verse 16. Acts chapter 22, verse 16. Vanessa, you should be able to do this one from memory. And now? And what? And now why do you wait? What is that, ver what is that verse, sir? Acts 22, 16. 16. And, and uh, now... Don't look it up. It's a memory verse. And now? And now? What do you wait? Arise and Get be up. baptized. Wash away your sins. Wash, yes, wash away your sins, calling upon his name. Calling on the name of the Lord. Okay, depending on your translation. Okay, now, you remember when we talked about Mark 16, 16, and how that makes it impossible for a baby to be a believer because a baby doesn't believe, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, at we going back to the Ethiopian eunuch, Acts chapter eight, verse thirty-seven. I'll let you read this one, Vanessa. What verse, sir? Acts chapter eight, verse thirty-seven. Eight thirty-seven. And it says, "Is this with all your hearts, Julie?" Says here, eight thirty-seven. And Philip said, "If you believe with with all your heart, you may." And he replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Okay. What does a baby believe? No. Nothing. Nothing right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so is it possible for a baby to hear? Yes. But can he understand? No. Uh, can he understand the gospel? No. Of course not. Can he believe? No. No. Can they repent of sin? Well, they don't have any sin because they are still innocent. And uh, can they speak? No. Oha, oha, oha. No. What's that, Vanessa? Oha, oha, oha. That's only they know, sir. <laughs> That's the only thing they know, right? So we see that this really shows us what? That baptism is not for infants. It is for adults who have made the confession. What confession? They confess that Jesus is the yes. Christ. Okay, and with that, I'll stop the broadcast for today.